Kate now. <laughs> Timmy's wondering if we're going to have Kate now. God is good. And all the time? God is good. Hallelujah. I uh, got, got some testimony. So I shared that Jesus poem, What Wondrous Grace. So I got a, I got a dear brother. I met him through YouTube, actually. And he was, for a short time, watching the sermons. And, and we've just kept in contact. He, uh, he has a tract ministry out in Mississippi. Uh, he's trying to work on a book called 40 Years on the Track Trail. He's 80 years old. He shut his tax office down because he's got essential tremors. And he made it a full-time prayer chapel. So he uh, he got the, the poem. I sent him the poem. He's distributed something like 10,000 copies already. And uh, I got a note from him. He said... Uh, uh, thank you so much for including the poem in the book. Um, sorry, this is not, this is what, what God is doing. He said, uh, I have seen people's eyes burst with tears in reading. He told me he saw two people, the moment they grab it, fall down and weep and give their lives to Christ. Yeah. It, it, it was something, I was driving from 50 lakes from an energy audit and I could hear it in my ear and David said daddy write it down send it out okay he this guy's an 80 year old man he used to um, used to prepare people's taxes God is so busy using simple people I give all, all praise and honor to Jesus that he would give us the honor to love him and walk with him every day. Sole Gloria Dio. To God be the glory. Leviticus 1. Father, I pray that whatever you have given today Abba, do not let any hindrance of media, selfishness, of anything get in the way of your word. Abba, please let it go to the furthest reaches of the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so, what is the abiding life? Y'all ready for this? Okay. It's called, uh, what is the abiding life? A living sacrifice. Leviticus 1, verse 1. And the Lord summoned Moses and spoke to him from the tent of meeting. Speak to the Israelites and tell them when any of you brings an offering to the Lord from the livestock, you may bring a, your offering from the herd of the flock. If his gift is a burnt offering from the herd, he's to bring an unblemished male. He must bring it to the entrance to the tent of meeting so that he may be accepted by the Lord. He is to lay his hand on the head of the burnt offering so it could be accepted on his behalf to make atonement for him. He, the person, is to slaughter the bull before the Lord. Aaron's sons, the priest, are to present the blood and sprinkle it. Ooh, Jesus. And sprinkle it on all sides of the altar that is at the entrance to the tent of meeting. I can't continue. Woo! Jesus. People laid their hands upon him. The priest slaughtered him. And the blood was sprinkled on the sides of the altar. In Matthew, is it Matthew, I believe? Do you, his blood be on us and our children. That's the point. That was Israel that said that. Okay, the word there, verse 5, he is to slaughter. The word there is natach. The word natach in Hebrew 
Uh, in modern Hebrew, there's a word called nituach, and it literally means surgery. That word comes from the word natah, slaughter. First thing in the morning, what God does, morning and evening. In fact, there's a devotional by Charles Spurgeon, morning and evening. Uh, the, ma the, the male presents himself. Person presents yourself before the Lord. Here I am. This is what happens. He must skin the burnt offering and cut it into pieces. The sons of Aaron uh, will prepare fire on the altar and arrange wood on the fire. Um, so, uh, and Aaron's sons and priests are to arrange the pieces, the head and the suet or fat, on top of the burning wood on the altar. There's so many images here. I, I, I don't even have time for it. The offer must wash its entrails and shanks with water. And the priest will burn all of it on the altar as a burnt offering, a fire offering of a pleasing aroma to the Lord. So, okay, how is this abiding? Go to Romans 12. I'm getting there. I'm trying, I'm, I, I, I hope that we're trying to walk you through this, okay? Please stop me if, if you guys are not following me. Romans 12. Therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, we don't sacrifice bulls or goats anymore. I urge you to present your bodies. Mm. Folks, your bodies, your lives, present your bodies as a living sacrifice on God's altar. Amen. Holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual worship, sometimes reasonable service. Let's go to Revelation 7. Y'all tracking? Yes. Revelation 7. No. Okay. Uh, if anyone says, well, is that person saved? Y'all should change what you say. Oh, yeah, he's saved. No. Uh, Revelation 7, verse 9. After this, I looked, and there was a vast multitude from every nation, tribe, people, and language, which no one could number, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were robed in white. The, the garments are often re referred to the works of what we would present with palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice. We're saved because we said a prayer. Salvation was when I gave my life to Jesus. No. Salvation belongs to God hmm. who is seated on the throne and to the Lord, or to the Lamb. All the angels stood around the throne, the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell face down before the throne and worshipped, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Mm -hmm. Leanne actually mentioned this in one of the videos called Seal Training. And one of the elders asked me, who are these people robed in white and where do they come from? I said to him, sir, you know. Then he told me. All right, so here it comes. Okay. Father, I just pray protection over this entire message in Jesus' name, by your blood, by the cross in Jesus' name. These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. Is this prophetic? Could be. Absolutely. There's more than one way to look at scripture. God is referred to as a diamond. Every time it turns, it's a different facet. Let me give you illustration. So if I hold this book, you see one plane. Now you see a different plane. Now you see a different plane. Now you see a different plane. God's the same way, but with a diamond. Okay? There's so many facets. The answer is yes and amen in the scripture. They washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Their garments are only, their works are only because of the blood of Jesus. Obedience. Stop trying. Stop trying to serve God. It ain't going to work. It's going to fail. Let him teach you. Happened to me the other day. I missed my devotions. I was a cranky pants. And I was just fighting. And I said, Lord, what gives? And I said, okay, what do you want me to learn from this? How selfish you are. 
is what he told me. I fell, and I was in the kitchen, and I fell and wept. And I said to Esther, I said, honey, I'm so selfish. I asked the Lord, what do you want me to learn from all this crankiness and attitude and whatever? He said, I want you to learn how selfish you are. Your devotional time doesn't mean how you are with Jesus. You don't, you're not owed devotional time. You're not owed intimacy. You should be thankful you're bought by the blood of Jesus. It is nothing. So you don't have devotional time. whoop de do. I missed my time. You know what? Tough steak. Go, go be with the lamb today. So you missed it. Oh, well, that doesn't change how you are with Jesus. He loves you. He died for you. Stop pouting. That's the abiding. That's the great tribulation. It's not what I wanted. I wanted to get up early in the morning. I wanted my quiet time. Kids are up and they're screaming, doing this, that, whatever. My wife is requesting of me. My husband needs me. He's got to go to work. I got up late. I missed this. I missed that. Tough noogies, as it is said. I would tell the kids, tough stink. God ordains your circumstances. Oh, I need to learn that even now. For this reason, they're before the throne of God. I said, okay, Lord, I've got nothing on my own. It's not me. Jesus, you got to change my attitude. I'm pouting, and I need you to kill this stupid flesh, to kill the stupid self. This part of me that wants to get offended because I didn't get what I wanted. The abiding says that part that wants to get offended that didn't get that time. Abiding is that little thing is not even there. That's abiding. Lord, I miss that time with you, but I have you. That's the abiding. For this reason, they serve him day and night in his sanctuary. His sanctuary. Where is our sanctuary? Is in Jerusalem being built now? No. The sanctuary is right here. Don't you know, don't you know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? What does 1 Thessalonians 5 say? Pray without Seizing. Seizing. Your heart should be prayer. Hmm. I love in the scripture, he says, but I am prayer. Your offering should always be incense of, of your, art, your, your, your heart, your attitude. Should always be, Jesus, you're always there. The one seated on the throne, this is your throne, will shelter them. Or rather, Spread his tent over. I love, I love that picture, Psalm 91. They will no longer hunger. They will no longer thirst. You get offended when you're hungry and you, you start kicking furniture over and saying, get out of my way, I need to eat now. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm being a little dramatic. Who doesn't know me to be dramatic? Come on, okay? What if you were to lose food? What if you don't have enough money for food? Now, rubber's hitting the road. Shoot, you overspent. You missed on your budget. Now you're short on funds for food. Lord, okay. I made a mistake on my finances. What are we going to do now for food? I will take care of it, he says. Okay, Jesus. You got this one. Lord, stink. I'm short on mortgage. What do I do? It's going to be late. I'm going to make a late payment. I love what Hudson Taylor would say. He was a missionary to China Inland. He, he started China Inland Mission. He lost some missionaries during the Boxer Rebellion when native Chinese were killing people, killing missionaries because of, they had opium problem. And uh, his assistants, associates would say, uh, Mr. Taylor, we got a problem. 
this person died, this person was killed, this person, this person, this person. He would take a breath. Does he have the challenges? Yes. There is a tinge. There is that sting of death. Because what that is, is death. You are getting offended, uptight, upset, anxious. That's the sting of death that wants to rob the abiding. Because apart from me, you can do nothing. Because now in that attitude, when you are apart from him, what you are literally experiencing is death. He turns around, looks at the window, and he sings, Jesus, I am resting, resting in the joy of what thou art. I am finding out the greatness of thy loving heart. Thou hast bid me gaze upon thee, and thy beauty fills my soul. For by thy transforming power, thou hast made me whole. Simply trusting thee, Lord Jesus, as I work and wait for thee. Resting neath thy smile, Lord Jesus, earth's dark shadows flee. Brightness of my Father's glory, sunshine of my Father's face. Keep me ever trusting, resting, fill me with thy grace. As missionaries are being killed one by one. One by one. One by one. Publicly executed. Publicly executed. Right. Publicly yeah. maimed. Yeah. They would yeah. cut their hands off, cut their feet off, cut their heads in the middle of everyone. And he says, Jesus, I am resting, resting. It will no longer thirst. The sun will no longer strike them, nor will any heat. Are your circumstances pushing on you on every side? And you're getting up tight? The abiding Christian says, All right, Lord. There's another in the fire right now. I can't see him, but I know he's there. Yes. Jesus, I heard. It's okay to acknowledge it. Don't deny it. Jesus never denied the cross. He said, what was the famous words? I, I love the hymn, come and mourn with me a while. Seven times he spake seven words of love. Where are those words? Where are we holding on to this man? Are we not holding on to these words on the cross? Are we not on there with him? Seven times he spake. What did he say? I thirst. Father, forgive them. Mother, behold your son. Son, behold your mother. Into thy hands I commit my spirit. Father, why have you forsaken me? Guys, don't deny that. But take it to the cross and say, Lord, I heard. We were in Bloomington, Leanne and I, and the kids. I'll never forget, we had wire rack. Okay, so I have my notebooks. Imagine this is a wire rack on the, in the fridge. That's what we saw. There was baking soda. The kids, Daddy, what do we have to eat? I don't know, honey. God's going to provide. We had, I think we ran out of decaf coffee. Salt, strawberry jelly, and quinoa, and that ran out. It's been years since we ate quinoa for that very reason. Kids don't like it because of that. I'll never forget sitting on the floor, and I saw a demon staring at me. He said, you're going to die and starve to death. And I said, no, my God's going to provide for me. And Leanne told me later on, on the bed, she was saying, Abba, she was pregnant with Samuel. She said, Daddy, I'm hungry. And she knew at that moment, God was no longer father, but Daddy. Immediately, I get a call frantic. Are you okay? What's going on? I said, honey, I got this call from so-and-so. Did we tell her anything? Well, she asked. Well, we're down to our last diaper. We have no food. Oh my. Well, okay. 
see what we can do. An hour later, we were wired. A lot of money. Years later, we, we told that individual, we said, you have no idea what you did for us on that day. She's like, you have no idea what I went through. I've never wired anything before in my life. I had to ask my husband who was in another state, and this person is in another state uh, on the West Coast. And uh, I said, you don't know what we went through. Because everybody rejected us. We had some family members say, oh, what's God? He's not, God's not going to always bail you out. That's a lie from the pit of hell. His name is Jesus. He is the Lord saved. He will always bail you out. I never want to hear that ever again. God will not always provide for you. You better believe he will. There's no condemnation to those in Christ Jesus. When you repent, he provides. He is Jesus. Yahweh saves. Yeshua. He is the Lord who saves. He will always bail you out. That is his nature. He is your redeemer. He is your goel. He loves you. I don't ever want to hear that again. That is American Christianity that says, I can do it by myself. Bull state. Then, you, then go ahead and provide for yourself in the wilderness. I don't ever want to hear that again. From any Jesus-loving Christian, God will always bail you out. He will always be there for you to repent. Why? Because he is a good father. He loves you. He died for you. What did Jesus say? I do what I see my father do. And I went to the cross. What do you think the father did? He died. He laid it down. Don't ever think for a second you can't come to the cross. Or you can't come. God, I really messed up. Please forgive me. The problem with Israel was they wouldn't even bend their knee. Or their heart. They gave offerings and he says it's putrid to me. Pardon my language. It was. Dumb. 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 And to, to you women out there. It was your menstrual cloth. That's what it looked like to him. He said I hate it. Come to me with a broken heart. Say oh God I screwed up. I can't get out of this. I am the one who saves you. I love the story of an Iranian pastor. When he was a Muslim, he said, oh, Allah, save me, save me. He had a dream. He had a vision because uh, uh, that's how God comes to them. And he had this vision where he was literally falling. And he said, save me, God. And he sees this arm with a hole in his hand. And he says, who are you? And he says, I am Jesus. I am your savior. And from that moment, he gave his life to Christ and is now a pastor in Iran. Mm -hmm. The abiding says, they cast their cares upon the Lord. And in the Hebrew, the word there is to roll. He says, Lord, this burden is too much. I hurt. Daddy, I'm hungry. And I said, Lord, I'm cold. Jesus, I hurt. God, I don't know what to do. God, I am lost. I'm confused. God, help me. The abiding knows whom they have believed. And they are persuaded that he is able to deliver them. That's what the abiding says. They know who they can run to. I run to the Father. They know. They know. They don't go to men. They don't go to doctors. They go to God first and let him guide. Daddy, you're the physician. What do I do? Go talk to so-and-so. Okay. The abiding says, the sun will no longer strike them, nor will any heat. It doesn't say it's put away. For the lamb who is at the center of the throne will shepherd them. He will guide them to springs of living waters, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The tears are there, but he wipes them away. Stop trying to save yourself. Stop trying to hide behind your own stinking hurt. Yes, I know you hurt, but stop trying to hide it. I don't want to let anybody in. Let them in. Let them in. Because God will strip you. And there'll be none to save. Stop the pride. Let them in. I'm sorry, this was not in my text. Go to Psalm 137. Y'all hot yet? 
Psalm 137. By the rivers, there we sat down and wept when we remembered Sion. Lament of the exiles. They were stinking proud. We should have listened, Lord. We should have listened. Our captors mocked us. They, they asked of us for songs and our tormentors for rejoicing. Sing us one of the songs of Zion, of Zion. They were, remember, Israel was, was glorious. Now they're laid waste. Come on, Israel. You said God fights for you. Where are you now? Sing us some of these glorious songs. How can we sing the Lord's song? Verse 7. Remember, Lord, what the Edomites said that day at Jerusalem, destroy it down to its foundations. The Edomites were a picture of the flesh. Listen to me. Listen to me good. If you are not willing, if you are not willing to expose yourself, if you are not willing to expose yourself, the flesh will come and expose you. Be sure your sin will find you out. You can be sure it's got me a little green apples. God will come in. He will send something to the flesh, expose you, rip you apart, and you'll be in utter shame. God, spare yourself that pain. Just do it voluntarily. And God will be right there. He's more wet, ready to give than you are to receive. He is so ready to take you in. Don't let the world shame you. Go to the Lord and just go ahead and expose it. Okay, Lord. Okay, I'd rather fall my I'd rather fall into the hands of the living God, First Chronicles 21, 13, than at the hands of man. I would rather fall into the hands of the living God for his mercies are very great. Stop trying to hold it. Go to Matthew 5, and this, this will be our, our last uh, section. The abiding says, The abiding says, This is, this is what happens. As your heart is being poured out. Sorry guys, Romans 12, you signed up as a Christian. Present your bodies. Guys, your heart's going to hurt. Your emotions are going to hurt. Your, 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 you will feel... There are, there are folks that say, you probably love crying. You, you, you probably love it. You love shedding tears. No, guys, it hurts. It physically hurts in my body. It aches. I feel it in my body like somebody's taking a rag and just doing this to me back and forth and tying it in knots. It doesn't feel good, but I know it's good. Knowing and feeling are different. Your feeling will come with the knowing. Guys, you got to know he's good. It is physically painful when you weep. It is physically painful when you're broken. It doesn't feel good. I'm going to tell you right now. Guys, you signed up for it. It's in the scripture. You want to walk out Jesus? He says he's the living word. Imitate me as I imitate Christ. That means be a living representation of his scripture. Walk out his scripture. Be that living sacrifice. It's right there if you'd only do it. Let it happen. Give yourself up, Lord, everything. My emotions, my mind, my heart, my will, everything. Take it. And watch what he does. Lord, I don't care if I cry all day. I'll do, I don't care. Do whatever it takes to break me. I don't like living like this. I want to live totally so loud for you. I don't like this anymore. I'm tired of mediocrity. I'm tired of complacency. I want to be yours. I don't want to be used of you. I don't want to be unfair. I want to be spent and be spent. I don't care what it costs. I don't care what's out there, whose name's on the board. I don't care anything about, about myself. I want you and only you. If I stay here, if I work in the field, I don't care. I want to be you, Jesus. I want to be with you. That's the abiding. You care for nothing of yourself. There's nothing left. There's nothing that you want greater than the love of Jesus. That's the abiding. And it's day in, day out. It doesn't feel good when it happens. But you know it's, it's good because afterwards you know all you can say is thank you, Jesus. That's the only thing I want for you to say is thank you, Jesus. That's the only thing that we ought to say. 1 Thessalonians 5. In everything, give thanks. Pray without 
easy. Thank you, Jesus, that I have a floor that the plate can be broken on. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for today. Thank you, Jesus, for the rain. Thank you for the thunder. Thank you, Jesus, that my nerves work on my toes. After just kicking the wall, not meaning to. Because there are people that live without nerves in their feet, and they lose their feet by amputation. Thank you, Jesus, that I can cry. Because there are people that can't cry. There are people that haven't cried for years because of trauma. Because they were told, big girls don't cry. And now they're not free. Thankfully, there's healing in the blood of Jesus. And there is freedom. And they are free. There are people that refuse to cry. Why? Because they're men and men don't cry. Really? Last time I checked, my Bible said Jesus wept. How did he weep? A little tear. Boo-hoo-hoo. You ever been to a Jewish funeral? Ripping clothes, beating breasts. Screaming, wailing, crying, weeping. Guys, weep. If you can't weep, ask God for tears. William Booth got a telegram. This, this whole prayer meeting revival thing is not working. We're, we're getting ready to leave. He sends a telegram. Two word telegram. Try tears. He said, try tears. They prayed with such fervency. They started weeping. Boom! Revival! Guys, I love the phrase by Brother Ravenhill. A preacher should not be preach. A preacher who preaches without tears shouldn't be preaching. It's got to hurt. Your love for Jesus has to hurt. It's got to cost you something. When it costs you something, it hurts. But that shows how much you love. You're willing to pay the price no matter the cost. Matthew 5, 43, you heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy, but I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. So you may be your, so you may be sons of your father in heaven. For he causes his son to rise on the evil and the good to send rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? What do you have? Don't even the tax collectors do the same, and if you greet only your brothers, what are you doing out of the ordinary? Don't even Gentiles do the same. Be perfect or complete. Therefore, as your heavenly Father is complete. And even uh, verse 38, you've heard it said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I tell you, don't resist an evil doer. On the contrary, if anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn the other to him also. As for the one who wants to sue you and take away your shirt, let him have your coat as well. And if anyone forces you to go one mile, go with him too. Give to the one who asks you. And don't turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you. Now, what's interesting is, in certain sections in the New Testament, Jesus says, somebody wants to borrow from you, give, don't expect it in return. Don't expect it in return. If they take it, it's okay, it's not yours anyway. They're not borrowing from you, they're borrowing from Jesus. Whoever gives to the poor lends to the Lord and he'll be rewarded. It's not yours. Psalm 24, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. Stop holding on to things here. That's Revelation 7. We just read it. This, they don't get hungry. They don't get thirsty. The sun doesn't scorch them. Why? Because the land guides them. It all belongs to the Lord. Stop getting offended for the things here. The abiding says, Lord, your car got stolen. What do you want to do? Yeah. Leanne shared with me a story. Uh, she came home from the store one day before we were married and there's a big old scratch on the side of the car and uh, I think it was in the rear I said huh and her mom was like honey somebody just scratched your car scratched up your car you need to call insurance this is this Lord somebody scratched up your car would you please fix it her mom got upset what <laughs> you know you going to do something about it God did. You know what he did? Leanne was rear-ended. About a month later, insurance 
took care of it. Uh, auto body shop. Mm. Remove the piece and put a new one. The scratch was gone. Wow. It's not yours. Your life's not yours. A lot of our problems are because we get tied down to the emotions here. We feel the sting of death and we refuse to acknowledge that. Let's face it. We want to hold on to our emotions. How we feel. I don't feel good. I feel offended. Or they shouldn't do that. That's not right. Really? You belong to the, to the Lord. Whose rights are they? If you belong to the Lord, do you have rights being God's property? In the military, if you get a tattoo, guess what? You could be charged with an Article 15, destroying government property. You're not your own. Your emotions are not your own. You have no rights of your own. You have no will of your own. Your will is to do the one of him who sent you, the one of him who bought you. God gives you likes, desires, etc. He does. I'm not saying we are mindless robots. He gives us expressions of who he is in us. I'm not denying the creativity of who God is in us. But our will is not to do our will. Jesus was identifiably a person. We are identifiably people. But the essence of who we are should be Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Father, I pray that we know more of the abiding today than we ever have. Lord, I pray that we walk and we talk and we live and move and have our being in you. Lord, be abiding now than ever in Jesus' name. Heal us, refresh us, restore us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.